Mary Elizabeth Hawker was a Scottish novelist publishing under the pseudonym Leno Falconer. Born in 1848 in Inverary, the daughter of Major Peter William Leno Hawker and Elizabeth Eraser. She was mostly self-educated. After her father's death in 1857, her mother remarried in 1862, but Mary had a poor relationship with her stepfather. Her first book was the 1890 Mademoiselle Ixé, published in Fisher Unwin's pseudonym library, and concerns a country house governess and Russian nihilists. The book was apparently banned in Russia, with Hawker dedicating her royalties from it to aid Russian exiles. After her mother's death in 1901, she struggled to keep herself in good mental and physical health, dying of consumption in 1908 at Broxwood Court, Herefordshire. Her 1891 Cecilia de Noel was her second novel and the only supernatural quote-unquote work she ever wrote. I will be one of the few voices of dissent in regards to this book and say that a supernatural story is most interesting when actually supernatural. Now as for Cecilia de Noel, I really have no idea who she is and that after having read Cecilia de Noel, since despite being talked about a lot, she barely makes an appearance in her own book. But let us start at the beginning. The story takes place at Weald Manor, starting with Lord Atherley, anti-religious skeptic extraordinaire, telling us his worldview as relating to God, religion and ghosts. And for the next seven chapters, that's pretty much all we will get. Oh, not all from Atherley, though he supplies a rightful amount of commentary and witticism, which can be very entertaining. The book consists mainly of accounts of the various people visiting the manor in relation to their seeing the ghost, taken down by Mr. Lindsay, a man about whom we do not find out a lot, except that he has some sort of disability in his legs, due to an accident of some sort, and that he once loved a woman but refused her love because he saw himself a cripple. At the house where he stays with the Atherleys, local landowners and Burgie's witticists, people have in fact reported seeing a ghost for many years even before the family moved in. But this aspect is almost entirely neglected in favour of Lindsay going from one person to another, inquiring about their beliefs. From an old schoolwoman who believes anyone outside the church shall suffer eternal hellfire, to Canon Bernard and Mr. Austin's less brutal affirmation thereof, to Mrs. Molyneux's more open-minded approach of not speaking of God, because he is not to be associated with terms that one can associate things with, to Atherley's unshakable scepticism and anti-religiousness, all the while taking down the stories of individuals who have seen the ghost. I say stories because these are short, banal narratives without much meat to them and with little else but vague and non-descriptive hints as to how horrible the ghost's face is and whatnot. Throughout the thread of this story, we occasionally get a rare mention of the non-present title character, but these remarks are quite rare and do not make us excited to see the woman at all. After six Gospels, as the chapters are rightfully called, Cecilia de Noel decides to finally show up. She is some kind of Samaritan who would put Jesus to shame, and she actually encounters the spirit herself, but has the brilliant strategy of pitying it and then hugging it, and that seems to solve the problem. The book is odd and less of a novel and more a series of thoughts on religion. 